Our colleague David Pesmino taught us how to make a killer grilled chicken recipe based on his Puerto Rican grandmother's version that uses adobo and saison. And it's a game changer. It really is. There's something about how the saison and adobo combine with that grill flavor. The chicken comes out just so flavorful and it, the color is gorgeous. Let's start with our spice mix. This is a dry adobo. There are wet adobos. They tend to kind of burn on the grill and so a dry one is a nicer option. I've got four teaspoons of granulated garlic and to that I'm adding one teaspoon of table salt. Next is a half a teaspoon of black pepper and I've got a quarter teaspoon of dried oregano. For the saison, you can make your own, but I like to use the commercial stuff. It's got MSG and <laughs> I kind of love MSG. It just brings so much depth and savoriness. If you're not into it, you can just choose a saison that doesn't contain MSG. And that was two and a half teaspoons of saison. But the other thing it has is a chiote yeah. or a natto, and it's what gives it this beautiful kind of pumpkin-y color. Mm -hmm makes the chicken look beautiful off the grill. It really does. So let's get started with the chicken. All right. This is a four and a half pound bird. Now with any chicken I'm doing, whether I'm using it for parts or using it whole, I get rid of any extra skin or fat that I don't want dripping onto the grill or in the final dish. Shears are great for this. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna cut out the backbone. The reason we're breaking this down is it'll just speed up cooking. Mm -hmm. Normally, people would discard this, but I actually think it's super tasty, so we're going to keep it. Okay, and we're going to grill it. It's the best bit. Now I'm done with the shears. I'm going to open this up, and I'm going to divide this chicken in half. I like to figure out where the center is, mm -hmm. and then you can just cut down until you hit the bone, and then you just, and that's it. We're just going to work with one piece at a time. First, I'm separating the breast from the leg, so I'll tuck this wing. And then I want to find the bone. If you do this, you can kind of figure out where the joint is. Mm -hmm. And the bones are right here. So I'm going to put slashes perpendicular to that bone all the way through the skin. Into the meat a little bit. Yep, right there. And then I'm going to put one at the joint as Yeah, where well. all the fat is. Yeah. And what this is going to do is it gives space for the dry rub to get in, but it also speeds cooking. One more on the back side. We don't need to slash the white meat because it cooks faster. Dark meat takes more time to get tender. That's why we want to speed it up and I'm gonna repeat with the other side. All right, now that this chicken is ready, let's get some spices on there. I'm gonna start by throwing on some gloves. Yeah, the annatto is basically a food coloring, so it will stain your hands. It will. I'm adding one tablespoon of distilled white vinegar mm. and one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. And what we're doing here is moistening the pieces so that that spice rub can really stick. And I'm gonna go in and gently loosen the skin a little bit so that I can get the salt and spice rub under the skin as well so that it's really gonna get into the bird as it cooks. If you don't mind, would you grab that sprinkle? and sprinkle it on? Happy to. Oh, it smells good. Doesn't it? Really garlicky. Yeah. And the vinegar, which I can smell. The combination is yeah. delicious smelling. The breast meat always needs a little bit of help, yeah. right? That looks perfect. I'll throw some plastic wrap on here, stick it in the fridge for three to 24 hours. Okay. All right, Julia, before we head outside, let's make a post marinade. Post marinade. Mm -hmm. That's a marinade you add post grilling? Correct. Ah, so it adds flavor right before serving. Absolutely. I'm going to start by smashing the six cloves of garlic, but don't worry, this won't be over the top garlicky. And then I'm just gonna run a knife through it. I just wanna break it down mm -hmm. and add half a teaspoon of table salt and I'm gonna mash this into a paste. And I'm just putting pressure on the blade and smearing it. And that coarse salt is gonna help break the garlic down. Mm -hmm. This kind of mellows the flavors a little yeah. bit so that it takes that heat away. And we're left with kind of a soft raw garlic flavor. So this is looking nice and bruised. That's good and sticky. Yeah, Let's scrape this sucker up. And I'm gonna transfer this to a disposable 13 by nine pan. Last couple of ingredients for this. I've got about a quarter cup of chopped cilantro. It'll go right in this pan. I've got a quarter cup of distilled white vinegar, quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil, and a half teaspoon of black pepper. Nice and simple. Now, just give this a quick stir, and let's grab that chicken and go outside. Hey there, fellow fans of cooking. Want to stay in the know? Visit americastestkitchen.com and sign up for our free Notes from the Test Kitchen email newsletter. Get exclusive tips, seasonal recipes, product reviews, and more delivered straight to your inbox. Sign up for free at americastestkitchen.com. 
Julia, I have set up the grill for us. Let me show you what I did. All right. I had a chimney that I filled to the top. It was six quarts of charcoal, and I've covered just half of the bottom of that grill. It provides a concentrated fire, but also gives me a little cool area to work with, which is really useful for this. I just want to give this a quick scrape. And to clean it up a little bit more and to prevent sticking, I'm going to oil it. All right, so let's start cooking. I have our chicken here. It's marinated for a little over three hours. Okay. And I'm going to slow roast it skin side up on the cooler side of the grill. During this first bit of cooking, that skin sets and it's not going to tighten up on us too mm -hmm. much later on when it sees more intense heat. So I'm just going to cover this and we're going to let this go for about 15 to 20 minutes, just until I see a little bit of browning on that chicken. Okay. Julia, it's been about 20 minutes. Let's have a peek. Oh, Isn't look it? how taut that skin is. Right? This chicken is not quite there yet. I'm going to just flip them all over so that they cook evenly. What I'm shooting for is to get the breasts to 150 degrees. Okay, which is not quite done. No, not quite done. Julia, would you mind handing me that paste? You got it. Oh, that smells good. It does, right? It's going to smell even better shortly. I just want that garlic to cook up a little bit. I'm going to put it over the hot side of the grill and we're going to let it come to a simmer. That garlic's going to start to cook up. It's going to become more fragrant. It takes two to three minutes. Can you hear that? There's like a gentle bubbling going a on. A little simmer. Oh, right? so I'm just going to pull this off and this is ready to go for later. And we'll Goodness. pop this lid back on and let this chicken finish roasting. Julia, it's been 15 minutes. Let's have a peek. That looks beautiful. That color is gorgeous. Yes. Right? We're almost there. I'm just going to check the breast and I'm really just going to pick the biggest piece, mm -hmm. insert the thermometer into the thickest portion. And oh, that looks great. I'm just shooting for 150. I deliberately undercooked them on this side because I want to add a little bit of browning to that skin, crisp it up just the tiniest bit more. We'll just move these over to the hot side. All I'm looking for is to take the breasts to 155 degrees and the legs up to 175. So as they hit temperature, I'm just gonna pop them into this post marinade. This browning step, it usually just takes two to three minutes. These are Dunskis. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's get these off of here. So one final step. I'm just going to slap some foil over this, scoot it over to that hot side, give it another maybe three to four minutes mm -hmm. just to get that post marinade bubbly. Is it time to eat? Oh, for sure. I'm starving. <laughs> Julia, this chicken has been resting for about 10 minutes. I'm going to divide the breast in half. I want to make sure this side, which is a little small, isn't a chintzy portion. <laughs> so I'm going to scoot the knife up a little bit, slice through the skin, and when I get to the bone, just a little bit of pressure. That's it. Look at that mm. cook. Look how juicy that is. And look at that color. That kind of brick red color is great. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to find that slash I made earlier and cut right down. And that's where we split the drum from the thigh. Mm -hmm. In your favorite bit. Yes, the best part, the back. Now this is just going to go right into this bowl. And you ready to eat? I am. All right. A little white and a little dark. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Why not some of each? And some sauce. Yes. Yes, please. Oh, mm. I can smell that grill on here. Oh, it smells so good. Doesn't it? Mmm. That is delicious. Isn't it? Yeah, it's got flavor, but it's not overpowering. It just enhances the flavor of the chicken. You get the garlic, a little bit of vinegar, and of course, the spice yeah. rub with the adobo and the saison. That garlic flavor just kind of blooms. You mm. get a little bit of the heat from the pepper, but it's like the best chicken you've oh. ever grilled. Yeah, it really is. Lon, this is amazing. Thank you for showing me. Oh, yeah. I got to thank Dave for showing me. Yeah, thank you, David. So if you want to make this classic recipe for a Puerto Rican style grilled chicken, make your own dry adobo, slash the legs for faster cooking, and let the cooked chicken sit in the marinade. From America's Test Kitchen, a terrific recipe for grilled chicken with adobo and saison. This is a game changer. Isn't it? I'm stealing this chicken. Yeah, it's almost perfumed. Yeah. Yeah. 
We hope you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed making it. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. And if you're ready to take your cooking to the next level, head over to americastestkitchen.com and get a free all-access trial membership. While you're there, you can sign up for our free email newsletters and download our app. With unlimited access to over 14,000 of our Test Kitchen recipes and 8,000 product reviews, you'll have everything you need to cook and learn. So I ask, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Let's make something great together.